Hey guys, this is Thomas from the band Camelot. I'm here in Berlin, and you are watching Stormbringer, the Austrian heavy zine. It's nice to have you here in uh, Berlin. We're sitting on the terrace of the Universal Building with a nice view over Berlin. It's a nice day. Um, how are you? How is the interview day going so far? It's going great. It's, uh, like you said, a beautiful day. I'm, I'm loving the sunshine. Um, and we're, we're glad to be part of uh, the Universal uh, family now with Napalm. And it's, um, so far the, the interviews have been, been fantastic, so we're happy to be here. You uh, will bring out a new album recently, uh, it's called Haven, it's not out yet I guess, uh, it's coming out in May. Um, uh, what is this Haven refer to, uh, referring to? Is it uh, some personal little haven you use to, as, a, as a refuge or something? Or is it like a haven like in the river or something? I mean it, it's, a, it's a basic kind of uh, overview of the record, you know, we want uh, the fans to have so, uh, some kind of haven for themselves if it's... Uh, a student with a rough day at school and they get lost in a song like My Therapy or um, it's a general generalization of of the album of um, of life and, and, and everything else uh, we want Haven to kind of be that um, a message for the fans to to not only uh, get away from their problems but at some point you know work at, at solving them you know um, don't rely on government or somebody else to to take care of your of your problems you know find a solution and have that spirit that fighting spirit so the the the, the songs and the lyrics are very deep going in in camelot so way back because every everybody implies it's um it's a fantasy uh lyric band because of the of, of the name you know but i think it's much more deeper it's much more behind it it's just uh, it's relating to everyday problems and stuff yeah definitely i mean in the in the, the beginning camelot was the idea was this more this medieval type thing but we found ourselves being limited lyrically and and uh, we didn't want to be kind of um pigeonholed into to being a uh, one type of band you know we wanted to be diverse and, and now we have a fan base that expects that diversity and they respect that um and you know like uh growing up i, li I listened to a lot of different types of music and i would never want to just be in a band that was, was about one thing you know um so that diversity is important and um so we hope you know uh, by now that the name is is not only the reference to a certain you know period in history you know like if you listen to a band called imagine dragons you don't think about dragons for example i mean so um you imagine dragons maybe maybe you imagine them but you might not think about them <laughs> no but you know what i'm saying it's like uh so we wanted to make sure that camelot uh, is and and will continue to be diverse and uh, on, on the new record Haven, we uh, added new elements that we always do with, with Camelot. And uh, I think on this one, we um, wanted to have a bit more of a modern metal kind of edge to some of the songs, and we were able to accomplish that. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, it's also the uh, second album with uh, Tommy Karavik on, on, on vocals. Um, how much was he involved in the songwriting this time? Very involved. I mean, uh, lyrics, vocal melodies, some of the music. Uh, He's definitely a force, force within the band now, which is which is a great relief for me because um, you know uh, in the past it was myself and the former vocalist working on all the songs and with, along with our producer. So to have Oliver now working with uh, with me and Tommy being part of it and Sasha, and um, it's just a great kind of uh, team that we can accomplish a, a lot of things now. Uh, and and we continue to have the same Camelot sound, which is great. But you mentioned Oliver, who's also here, by the way. Um, is is the driving force behind the band? Meanwhile, you and Oliver writing the songs, and the other ones contributing. I would say it's um, everybody. It's it's a w the band is now more unified than ever. Um, the guys like when we're on tour now, it's like a, a bunch of brothers. There's never any fighting. We're, we're the kind of brothers that get along because most brothers fight, but um, 
so you know I don't like to say it's one or two people or you know um, we all work together to create something hopefully that that is unique and that the fans um, that resonates with the fans and and, and something that they can identify with mm -hmm. in, in the music mm -hmm. Um, now it's uh, normally it's a phenomenon in, in Europe at least that uh, melodic and symphonic uh, power metal bands always come from like Italy or Spain or something like that and they are most appreciated in down the south um, of yeah. Europe. Uh, now it's it's very unusual because you come from Tampa originally, which yeah. we which we normally know from bands like Obituary or something like that. Uh, I mean a lot of times people think that Camelot's from Finland or Germany actually, but. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I grew up loving classical music. There's a lot of that in, in Camelot. Um, so I think that uh, now that the world is kind of shrinking in terms of um, being able to connect with other people in, in different countries and influences are more vast, I think, for musicians, you'll find that... Um, you know that certain genres will come from anywhere and everywhere. Uh, I grew up in Tampa when there was bands like Sabotage and Crimson Glory. Um, so those were the kind of the Im earlier influences on Camelot. And um, you like to be over in Europe to record or to write songs, I guess, because you're here with uh, in the studio very often with Sasha Pate. Yeah. And um, why don't you want to record uh, at home or in, in America somewhere? Well, the first few demos and the few first couple of records were done in Tampa. And we actually recorded the drums in Tampa on this album. Um, most of my guitar parts were done in, in, at my home studio. But um, when we're working with a certain producer, it makes more sense for them to work in their own studio. They're used to the equipment, the, you know, and knowing how to set up microphones, etc. So that's, that's kind of why that happens like that. Okay, that's easier for you to work with uh, somebody sitting in, in, in uh, like Sweden, some, somebody in Germany, somebody in, in Florida. But uh, I think you are using very uh, modern equipment as well to not be in the studio at the same time. But don't, don't you miss the, the recording with everybody at the same time playing live into a studio, like, like a session or something? <coughs> I mean, that's something that hasn't been done by bands probably for 20 years. Um, Usually people think that a band gets in the studio together and they record. That that doesn't happen anymore, and it hasn't happened for a long time. Uh, usually, I just meant the approach yeah. of, of, of trying to create that atmosphere. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we do that when we when we when we're demoing the songs. For example, we'll work on the songs together, and, and then we'll then you have to break it down. You have to do the drums separately so that there's no bleed over from the guitar into the snare sound. You know, mm -hmm. um, so modern recording. Uh, pretty much it, it takes to have that isolation of each instrument and then when you mix it that's the that's when the magic happens when you you're able to isolate certain things but at the end of it it's everything is mixed in a way that uh, sounds good to the ears where is the, the the line for you that you say it's not too overloaded with all this uh, orchestra stuff like the new you know the new uh, blind guardian for me it's too overloaded with stuff I, I, you know I, yeah i haven't heard that album but um with this record, we definitely wanted to, the guitars to be a little bit more up front in the face, uh, and a lot of times the the orchestral parts or the keyboards uh, suffer when you do that. But um, so it's a it's a fine line you have to walk to make sure you you keep those elements that you want. If it's symphonic, um, and like I was saying on this record, we wanted we wanted to have some of the songs have a more modern metal approach. And to do that, you you have to make the guitars more in your face, and, and mix the keyboards in a different way. Maybe you even record them in a different way so that they're not clashing with the guitars. Co-writing with Oliver, for example, he brings in a lot of this stuff because he's arranging like for musicals and and, and soundtracks and all these these uh, things. Um, for a long time, you didn't have a keyboard player at all in Camelot. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, does he bring in new stuff like old bit jazzy bits unconsciously or something like that? Yeah, occasionally. I mean, and sometimes there's some things that are uh, maybe uh, over the top jazzy or, or or progressive. But the f the thing is, he's so good at um, creating ideas and having uh, and under understanding the Camelot kind of sound and sticking to that 
but also knowing that we, you know, there's always going to be new things that we want to do. Um, maybe we, we put some loops in that you don't really hear uh, in the music, but they're there. And if you took them away, you would notice something's different. Things like that. Um, and you know, we had we had Miro uh, doing a lot of the orchestral and keyboard stuff in the past, but uh, Oliver's um, with with this record, he's he's basically doing all the orchestral arrangements. So um, it's been great to to work with him and to include him more in, in the whole thing. So you you've been around a lot with the band. You've seen the whole world. You see every continent, I guess. Um, is there any country left you want to go? You just want to play, or the, the people there want you to play there? Well, we just got an offer to go to New Zealand. We had uh, played in Australia last year, but I want to go to New Zealand. I like to go to uh, more countries in Asia, for example. Austria, uh, maybe. Austria. We played in Austria last year. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. There's always new frontiers to, to conquer. We have never played in Hawaii, for example, which would be cool. Alaska. Um, Will there be uh, an audience in Hawaii, for example? I would say there there should be. I mean, it's a it's fairly populated uh, state. In Alaska, maybe not. Maybe a lot of moose yeah. <laughs> and salmon. There are lots of depressive people there. Yeah. <laughs> But um, actually, we have we have some fans in Alaska. They've come down for shows in Seattle. So um, there's always there's always new places to visit. There's always new experiences in the towns that you've been to before. Like uh, even coming here to Berlin now, um, I've been able to come here a lot since we started. But there's always uh, parts of the city I haven't seen that I, I want to see. So it's a big city. Yeah, it's a big city, and there's a lot of different. Um, you know nuances to this city when, when you look at the east and, and the west parts of it and so if um if you're curious and i and i am i always try to to find uh, new experiences when we're tra traveling i think we are in the formerly east side now i, I don't know really but yeah um, we're on, yeah. The, on the uh on the waterfront here in the east side and uh and this is an area that i haven't been to that much and i guess universal set up a uh, camp here which is really cool And uh, there's an awesome bridge right right there that um, I had never seen before. So uh, it's all this uh, long piece of, of, of the wall down there. Is, yeah, is, the wall. You seen it? Yeah, I saw that. That's cool. Um, is, is it is it uh, weird for you to see that now when it's always like 30 years ago? And well, no one could imagine here yeah. when you weren't living here. You know. It is weird. It's it's always weird. I mean, I I saw when the first time I came here was probably. I don't know, 13 years ago. Uh, our record company at the time was based in Berlin, so I went to visit the wall, and that was always something as a kid, you know, you you wanted, if you're curious about history, you know, it's something that I wanted to see, so that was cool. Um, coming back to Austria for a short moment, you know you are with an Austrian record label now, with Napalm Records. I think they're just doing the distribution for now, for Europe and, and the US, as far as I know, because for Asia you got a, another company. Um, how is it going so far with them? It's going great so far. Um, you know, uh, it was a long process to deciding with who would have the Haven record, and um, they were very persistent about you know wanting to work with Camelot which is which is great it shows that they uh, believe in, in the band they believe in the potential to, to grow the band um, just being here at Universal Records was a big part of that because I really feel like having the strength of a, of a major label in the distribution part was, was one of the the benefits to us working with Napalm and um, they, they have uh a very diverse roster now and it's a growing label so we're, we're happy there's strong uh, power metal roster like in, uh, I think um, Grave Digger and stuff they have power metal they have symphonic metal with yeah. Delane they have uh, gothic metal like with Moonspell so mm -hmm. it's they're diversifying which is which is a good sign that uh, they're not going to just have one or two different styles of music and I, I like that being on a label that um, is uh You know, and diverse in their in their roster. I read a statement of you recently, which says um, you have the feeling the band is just beginning to to grow, or just starting out. Is it still so? Well, I mean, it's it's in a way it's uh, a sign when 
the records are selling more than the past and that um, the band is going to new countries that we never got offers to in 15 years you know so when we go we start getting offers from Australia and now we're going to go to New Zealand next year at some point um, new cities we're going to Western Canada for example we've never been there um, and it's amazing I mean it's just the 11th album now Eleventh one. Yeah. So normally a band is starting out with the second or third album. You're right. eleven albums in, and you still feel fresh. Yeah, totally. To start I mean, over. So I think you know, uh, f like it or not, you know, having uh, Tommy come in the band with Silverthorn also brought in a fresh kind of injection into the, the whole thing. And when when we're on stage together, everybody is there they, that that wants to be there. Everybody loves performing. We like sharing that experience with the fans and the, the Camelot fans know that a, a, a Camelot show is not only about the band on stage it's about the interaction between mm -hmm. us and, and everyone else in the, in the audience beautiful made up records with the cases and everything yeah of course I mean we we want to make sure that um, for every all the fans that buy our albums that they get a hundred percent with not only the music but also the, the artwork the booklets we have like a artwork in the new booklet is just amazing uh, done by Heilemann and um, so that that kind of always that sort of approach to making sure everything is done at a high quality level is, has been something that we've done and, uh, and we continue to do there's lots of things to go for for you in the future I hope and um, yeah next next album will come out in, in May Yep. In like Haven. four weeks or something. It's called Haven. Buy it. Hear it. Yeah, like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I've, as I thank you for this okay. wonderful interview on this wonderful terrace in wonderful Berlin. Uh, some last words to our Stormbringer viewers. Yeah, I just want to thank all you guys for your support. Um, you know, uh, we're coming to uh, on to Europe in the fall, I think, this fall. I read something about it. Yeah, so we want to make sure everybody's coming out for that. And... Um, Go check out the record. We got some slamming videos coming up too from the album. So there's a lot of fun Camelot stuff coming up on the pipeline here. So it's going to be an amazing year. So be there.